everyone, it's Haley, and today I'm going to be doing my May book haul. So today's video is sponsored by Chapters Indigo, the bookstore that I work at and my favorite place to buy books. If you guys wanted to go and check them out, I will leave the link down below for you guys. The last time I did this book haul, I did a little follow me around book haul, so if you wanted to watch that, the link will be down below as well. Today I'm just going to be doing a regular book haul, but don't worry, I will be doing more follow me around book hauls in the future. You guys seem to really like that and it was really fun to do, so stay tuned for those. But I have a whole ton of books to talk about today. I've got some Alice books here, I've got some new releases some arcs, all that jazz, so let's just dive on in. So first I have two of the Indigo Staff Teen Picks of the Month, so I didn't get to include the April one in my April video since it was a follow me around one and I filmed it in March, just yeah, you get the point and you don't care. But the April Teen Staff Pick of the Month was Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Edayami. This is a fantasy that is set in a world where magic has disappeared and magis have been killed and persecuted for their ability to perform magic. Now that ends up leaving our main character without her mother, but she ends up teaming up with a rogue princess and together the two of them are on a mission to try and outwit this cruel prince and haha, <laughs> cruel prince, but back to what I was saying, restore magic. I'm sure you have seen this book somewhere because it has been everywhere since it came out, since before it came out, and I have been dying to get my hands on a copy. And then, of course, when I get one, I'm not in the mood for like high fantasy. I can't handle high fantasy right now. Since I've been writing so much fantasy, I just can't read high fantasy. So I haven't read this yet. And I'm so sad about it. I want to read it so badly. I think I'm going to bring it with me to California. So then hopefully I will be able to read it because, oh my god, I've heard just nothing but amazing things. So I just need to read it. Next is the May teen staff pick of the month and that is One of Us is Lying by Karen M. McManus. So this is described as The Breakfast Club meets Pretty Little Liars which is so intriguing to me especially because when you read the synopsis it literally is The Breakfast Club. Like literally full on breakfast club. But it is about five students who go into detention and only four of them come out. Dun dun dun! So we've got like a brain, beauty, outcast, all of that jazz. It's literally, it just sounds like breakfast club, but creepy. So I'm very intrigued by this one. I'm probably going to be saving it for around October since that's when I like to read my creepy reads for Halloween. But I've heard some interesting things about it, so we'll see how I like it. Next I have a couple of books that Chapters Indigo sent to me for Canada Book Day. So first is Past Tense by Star Spider. This is all about Julie, and Julie has been in love with her best friend Lorelai since they met in grade three. But Lorelai does not know this, and she's actually been trying to set up Julie with her ex-boyfriend. On top of all that, Julie is having a lot of family issues. Her mother thinks that she has died. She's convinced that her heart has stopped, and while she's trying to adjust to going into high school and going into grade nine, she's also every night like going and burying her mother. This sounds really weird. I'm very intrigued by the premise though, so we'll see. Next is Here So Far Away by Hadley Dyer. This is all about a rebellious cop's daughter who falls in love with an older man and is just trying to make it through her last year of high school while battling depression. This sounds like it's going to be a really emotionally intense story and I'm very intrigued to see where that premise is going to go. Next I have a few new releases that I've picked up and pre-orders that I've received. So first is Leah on the Offbeat by Becky Albertalli. This came out in April and I was able to snag a signed first edition which is really exciting. I always love having signed books. I honestly thought this wasn't signed at first. I was like looking here and I was like, wait, what? But then I found the signature. But I've already read this and you would know that if you watched my live reaction review. I will link that down below for you guys if you wanted to check it out. Beware though because it will contain spoilers for the book as I'm going through the book and literally giving you my thoughts as I'm reading it. But I had a lot of fun doing that video and this was such a fun read. I just love the crew of Simon. Like I absolutely am just like, yes, I love all of you and I want to be in your friend group. And Leah is definitely a character that I've been intrigued by because the whole time I was reading Simon I felt like there was more to her story and more to her character that we weren't really seeing and now we got it in this book. This was Leah's time to shine and you learn about her being bisexual and her having a crush on someone that she really doesn't want to have a crush on but she does and it's adorable and just so cute and perfect and this book is amazing. You need to read it. And if you haven't read Simon yet, first of all, what are you doing? Second of all, go and 
and read it. And then read this one and then we can discuss. Next is Restore Me by Tahara Mafi. This is yet again another signed first edition. She has literally like the prettiest signature. Why can't I flip book pages? That's literally my one job. It's just such a pretty signature. But this is the next installment in the Shatter Me series. It's the first of three new books that Tahara Mafi is coming out with. And this picks up two weeks after the events of Ignite Me, which was really surprising to me because I felt like there was going to be a longer time gap in here, but it's a very short time gap. I did enjoy this book, but I had a few issues with it. I discussed them more in my wrap up, but overall it was a really good next installment and I'm excited to see where the story is going to go. It took a little while for the action to get going, but it definitely left off on a really big cliffhanger, so I can't wait to see what the next book has in store. Get it? Restore me? In store? No? Okay, moving on. The next new release I picked up is, of course, A Court of Frost and Starlight by Sarah J. Mass. This is actually the Indigo exclusive edition, so it has lovely, just beautiful fan art on the end papers. Here is the other side of that. It's just so gorgeous. I love fan art, and these artists are so talented. Meanwhile, like, I can barely draw a stick figure. But I have read this, and I actually did another live review reaction video, so I will link that down below for you guys if you wanted to read along with me. It definitely wasn't what I was expecting. I knew it was a novella, but then I also knew that Tower of Dawn was supposed to be a novella, but it turned into a novel, so this was definitely shorter than I was expecting, and there wasn't that much action. It was quite character driven, but for what it was, it was very enjoyable. I had a lot of fun reading it. It takes place at the winter solstice after the events of A Court of Wings and Rune, and it's kind of about like rebuilding and all of that jazz. I don't want to say too much, so I won't spoil you, but it has a gorgeous cover, and I think it's definitely worth the read if you really enjoy the world and enjoy Sarah J Mass and the characters. The next new release that I picked up is To Kill a Kingdom by Alexandra Christo. I was kind of surprised when we didn't get this book in my store because I had seen it everywhere, like all over Instagram, all over bookish social media. This book was everywhere. Now, I will admit, I was kind of skeptical. I don't know how I feel about the cover, just something about the tentacles and like the more I look at it, the less I don't like it. But at first I was kind of like, mm, I don't know. But I listened to the audiobook for this and I ended up really enjoying it. This is a dark retelling of The Little Mermaid. It features sirens and it has really great characters in it. It definitely wasn't what I was expecting because it does follow pretty closely to The Little Mermaid story, but while making it its own. It has a super unique twist on it. You can pull the elements that you would be familiar with, but then you're also like, that's an interesting way to look at things. So I thought this was a really cool story, definitely not what I was expecting, and it was just thoroughly enjoyable. While we're on the topic of YA, I'm going to talk about the rest of the arcs I have before getting to the Alice books that I have. So first, I have some arcs that are already out. So first, I have The Last to Let Go by Amber Smith. This follows Brooke, and everything was going to plan for Brooke until her mother is arrested for killing her abusive father. No one really knows what happened, so Brooke and her siblings end up being on their own, and obviously her junior year doesn't exactly go as planned. I'm really intrigued by this because I don't think I've ever read a book that is like this, and I feel like it has the potential to really get across a good message, and I'm interested to see how it's going to do that. Next is Ink Mistress by Audrey Coulthurst. This is the prequel to Of Fire and Stars by Audrey Coulthurst, which I have had on my TBR forever. Like, literally forever. I don't know what I'm doing. I really want to read it, I just haven't gotten to it yet. But this is all about a demigod with the ability to predict the future by writing in her own blood. So she has to hide this power, obviously, because I feel like people would be like, what is happening? Like, you know. But I don't know if I'm going to read this book first, or if I'm going to read Of Fire and Stars first. If you've read both of them, or one of them, please let me know what order I should read them in. Next is a fairly recent release, and that is Nine Days and Nine Nights by Katie Catugno. This is the sequel to 99 Days, which I'm actually currently reading. I'm not very far into it at all, but I'm reading it because I am dying to read a European travel book, and this is a European travel book. So I'm so excited to be able to get to this book because I was just going to read this one just because I was like, I need European travel right now. This time last year, I was backpacking Europe, so I'm just like, I need something that will bring me back there. So I'm very excited to get into this one. And the final arc that I have that is already out is What the Night Sings by Vesper Stamper. This is a novel set in the time of World War II, but it's different than any other World War II novel I've read before because it follows the aftermath. The main character, Gerda, has been liberated from a concentration camp, but in that camp she lost everyone and everything she knows and loves. So now she's trying to rebuild a life when she has lost everything. I'm so intrigued to read about the after effects because I only have ever read books that are set during, and I think that 
that it's really important to be reading about after as well. This also has some illustrations peppered throughout, which I always love. I feel like it just enhances the reading experience. Like, look at how powerful that image is. I'm just very much looking forward to learning more about how the victims of the Holocaust coped afterwards. Next, I have three arcs that are coming out in the next couple of months. First is The Bird in the Blade by Megan Bannon, and this is coming out on June 5th. I saw in Goodreads that this is actually a retelling of an opera called Toronto. I'm not familiar with operas, but apparently this is a retelling of that. It follows the main character, Jinghua, who is a slave that has lost everything. But things start looking up a little bit when she finds herself as an unlikely conspirator in the escape of the prince and his father as they flee from enemies across the Mongol Empire. I don't know what it is that intrigues me about this story so much. It's a debut and it says on it, three impossible riddles, one dangerous secret. I'm just intrigued, I think, because it seems like it's kind of like a historical fantasy and I've never read anything about like the Mongol Empire or anything like that. I'm definitely gonna have to look up the opera that it's retelling, but we'll see how this goes. Next is Grace and Fury by Tracy Banghart. This is coming out on July 31st and honestly the first thing I've read about it was in a world where women have no rights and already I was just like Ooh. so then immediately I knew I had to read this. But it follows sisters Nomi and Serena. One of them lives in a palace and one of them lives in a prison so they both definitely have very different lives and very different fates in store. I feel like the combination of reading about sisters and a world where women are not given rights just seems like a very like Handmaid's Tale-esque sort of thing that I'm very intrigued by. I still have not read The Handmaid's Tale. I really need to. I know, terrible Canadian, but I will get to it soon. But this definitely kind of gives me those vibes. So I love reading about sisters and I love reading things that just make me feel like, yes, women. So I think this will have both of those things. I know at least one. It definitely has sisters. And the last book for this book haul is Heart of Thorns by Brie Barton, which is also coming out on July 31st. This takes place in an ancient river kingdom where your body is a weapon. There's like these women who can manipulate your flesh, your blood, your bone, all that jazz, and they are responsible for the death of the main character Mia's mother. So Mia spends her life hunting them until her father announces that she has been arranged in a marriage. I feel like Mia just seems like a really powerful character and I love seeing powerful daughters in particular being put into situations by their father where their father's like trying to control and manipulate them because they're always like nice try no thank you and I just I love reading about women rising up against tyranny. Rise up you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm rise up. So this definitely sounds like it's a book that's right up my alley. I almost forgot that I had a pile of Alice books here to show you. So I've got five books here to show you. So first is this edition right here. I'm not sure who this one is by. Let me see. Legend Press. This one doesn't feature illustrations, which is kind of a bummer, but it does have a really cool cover because I love the fact that it's like rabbit ears. Next, we have the Macmillan 150th Anniversary Edition of Through the Looking Glass. I have a poetry book that's in this edition. Edition, and then I also have Alice in Wonderland that's in this edition. So I had to get the Looking Glass one because one, it had to match, and two, I didn't have it in my collection, and three, I have a problem. Next, I picked up the Classics Reimagined Edition. This has illustrations by Andrea Diaquino, and the edges are purple, which is absolutely amazing, and the illustrations are like so weird. They make me think of like Art Attack. If you know Art Attack, that makes me really happy, by the way. But like, they're so weird and so cool, and I just love it. Next, I picked up the Softcover version of the Penguin English Library Edition. I have the hardcover cloth bound one and now I have the paperback. And finally I got the Salvador Dali Illustrated Edition of Alice which I have had my eye on for so long and then we got it at my store and I was like Ooh, I need this. Obviously Salvador Dali is such an iconic artist and just seeing his take on the story and the weird world that is Wonderland is just so amazing and I cannot get enough of it. It is honestly just absolutely gorgeous. So that is all for today's book haul. Thank you very much to Chapters Indigo for sponsoring this video. If you wanted to go and check them out, link will be down below. If you guys like this video and you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe. I put out new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, but I also put up some bonus videos sometimes, so be sure to click that little bell icon so you'll be notified whenever I post. You can also follow me on all of my social media, all of my handles and links and all that stuff is down below for you guys. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye! Bye.